Hello, Sacred Geometry Decoder. This will be part seven in this series where I've been looking at Hermes uh, Trismegistus and everything around this sphere, the Emerald Tablet, the um, Corpus Hermeticum. And where I left off from the last episode was again going back to the older text where Ian Blickus, uh, mathematician, Neoplatonist, very important figure, so influential to all of the later Hermetic uh, artworks, the philosophy and, of course, the quadrivium, uh, specified that the Hermes being a pen name for everything to be surrounded with this particular field. Uh, this is a page from uh, De Re Metallica, this uh, um, 16th century text on mining technology, uh, pure, uh, m refining metals, just that whole, again, general era. And he too uh, credits Hermes in his opening um passages. He also mentions a few others. We'll look at those now. Osphenes, Zoroaster, um, uh, not a Gephodema, uh, Geber and Valentine, uh, which is not mentioned in here, but there are definite connections. And for instance, Cleopatra, the alchemist, and Maria the Jewess, uh, two of the four female um, alchemists said to have uncovered the secret of a philosopher's stone. So the uh, Froben copy, we see the Caduceus on top, the Caduceus of Hermes, Mercury, gods of knowledge, science, gods of magic, gods of knowledge, weights and measures, and just some of the images from there where we see this, uh, how to refine metals. It's also got the machinery of mining and a lot of aspects in there in De Re Metallica. Um, so, okay, Hermes, it's credited uh, in there. Now we'll look at the others. And also this is an intro... All these alchemists employ obscure language. I'm going to do in the final couple episodes, especially looking at medicine and the origins pre-Greek uh, of these uh, texts, and especially how they emerged through Babylon and the issue of translation, which was an ancient issue of translation at this obscure language. is not a problem just now, but was a serious enough problem back in the Greek times that the priests had to put out uh, public declarations explaining the language so to stop people... Uh, basically butchering animals that had nothing to do with the language being employed in those medicinal remedies. Remedies. So the Corpus Hermeticum, uh, back, so back in 2002, uh, they re-examined the original text, compared them to the translations um, uh, by Ficino, who, and his translations then being repeated, 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 up through to the secret symbols of the Rosicrucians, and leading to certain issues. Um, in the opening notes by uh, Hoover, who translated it into English, okay, for lot, um, the German translation, as he states, is it, is a, it is a wretched work by one who knew nothing of the science and more especially had no appreciation of the peculiar Latin terms coined by Agricola, most of which he rendered literally. So the, again, the issue of translation and when certain words come up, and this is um, a serious issue, I would say. Now, I can't answer all the questions. There's a lot more to this, but just trying to stay with what we can sort of examine. Uh, Basilica Chemica by Oswald Kroll or Oswald Krollius. See the plumb line and the, and the square, which is, again, this very, very important image uh, in uh, Freemasonry and even earlier such as Basil, um, sorry, uh, Kirscher, it just it's a very important standard. It's also referenced uh, quite a bit in the Bible. Uh, just let me pause a moment. For instance, the frontispiece we see here, and again, just to zoom in on it, you see the caduceus uh, of Hermes, the symbol of uh, Hermes, Mercury, Hermes, Mercurius, Trismegistus, gods of knowledge, commerce, science, uh, all that. And magic, but like we'll okay, we'll look at magic in a moment. Um, but there's some interesting uh, figures here. I'll just move on now. For instance, um, Agricol, Agricola mentions again Hermes, and so we see on the top uh, left of um, Oswald Kroll, Hermes Trismegistus of Egypt, and you notice the phoenix as well in there top right we have Geba of the Arabs and notice the pelican with feeding its young from its breast uh, by bleeding. Geba 
course is mentioned here. So Geberin and Hermes Trismegistus, we saw earlier episodes, uh, are pen names because, for instance, especially Geber, which from uh, eighth, uh, ninth century, but the number, same with Basil Valentine and a few others, the, the number of works that they did, the difference in languages and style in the works, again, highly, highly, almost certain that this was a uh, this was a pen name employed by uh, many. He also referenced uh, Raymond Lullius or Raymond Lull, Let's see Raymond Lully. Uh, this uh, okay, we'll look at this image as well, but also the um, Star of David hexagram above there. Also, this uh, notice the free flowers. I'll bring that up again as well. Uh, Raymond Lull mentioned him earlier. He was a Doctor Illuminatus. Uh, Raymond Lully, Doctor Illuminati, a mathematician imp uh, important in election and computation theory, which uh, so influenced to uh, Gottfried Leibniz and binary code and well, binary code computing. He also referenced Cleopatra. Now, Cleopatra the alchemist, not the more famous Cleopatra. This is one of her works, uh, Chrysiopeia on transmute uh, the philosopher's stone. But you might notice as well these instruments, which are distillation tools, uh, working like an alembic, and also the urubus. Now, I, for both uh, the Renaissance pre uh, medieval alchemists of, of Europe, but also prior to them, the Arabian alchemists, they reference and hold Cleopatra of Egypt in high regard, one of the women said to have uncovered the secret of the Philosopher's Stone, but also said to be the inventor of the alembic or distillation. So if you've ever you know, had a scotch or whatever, you know, just give a the shout out to Cleopatra the alchemist and her alchemical chemical process, which is still used in labs today. If we zoom in on her Urubus, Uruborus, it translates to all is one, which is again very important in the Neoplatonic um, and these philosophical schools as well. Uh, some other, again, we see these alchemical tools and the um, Uruborus as well. And again, Arab alchemy prior to European. This is by Athanasius Kircher. I mentioned earlier the the Phoenix. We also have the Uroboros. Now we also have the North Star and Leo, which we could. But again, this is from uh, Kircher's work, and this is uh, from Oedipus Aegyptiacus. Again, these symbols. Notice also Auster or South and Boreas or North is upside down. East and West is swapped as well. This is a common uh, thing that happens with this Sun and Moon beams but from Kirsch's work uh, okay pay attention there on on top of the crocodile on top of the lizard now if you zoom in Sun and moon music and distillation tools geometry weights and measures so again with these repeated uh, symbols in across all these different uh, time periods and, and cultures he also mentions Cleopatra and Maria the Jewess, and she is important because she is said to be the inventor of the Jewess, uh, the Maria's bath, or Bain Marie, also said to have uncovered the secret of the Philosopher's Stone. And again, medieval, Renaissance, uh, Arab alchemist referencing the Maria's bath and holding Maria the Jewess in high regard, uh, along with distillation, so the Soxlet extractor emerges from this time. So all these chemical tools that you would see in a, you know, in a modern lab have their origins uh, way, way back and connected to these famous alchemists. Of course, Hermes Trismegistus inscribing all their writings with this name. Well, these other people are also the equivalent of uh, Hermes, so Geber, etc., where it's a, it's a pseudonym, it's a, which is employed by other people. This is from the notes uh, written book by Hoover in his... Uh, translation of uh, De Re Metallica, and again Hermes Tr Trismegistus, uh, a legendary supposed to have flourished, but there is no surviving works prior to the second century, not so long after Ian Blickus wrote that all the writings with the name of Hermes, he was right up against that back at that time. He also mentions Osphenes, another very shadowy personage considered by some alchemists to have been an Egyptian prior to Hermes, 
and by others to have been a teacher of Zoroaster. So he's ancient. Alchemists, the Greek ones, have different ideas on, you know, and again, employing pen names. Pliny mentions a magician of this name, Zoroaster, who accompanied Xerxes' army. Later, many others by this name. Most probable explanation is that this was a favourite pseudonym by ancient magicians. Oh, sorry, uh, yeah, but uh, Xerxes' army. But, but we have many people connected to uh, Osphenes, Zoroaster, Hermes, Foth, and uh, Agathodamon as well would be compared in uh, Zosimus as well. But uh, did I show? Now, for instance, he mentions... Uh, Zosimus, and if we go back, uh, this is the Alembic of Zosimus, so again he's mentioning uh, multiple, you know, these characters overlapping from one another, Hermes, okay, Zoroaster, this is it, now, a favourite pseudonym for ancient magicians, well, any sufficiently advanced technology would be indistinguishable from magic, okay, if I go for a moment, this is that Kroll page, and he references uh, Roger Bacon, who and again, I mentioned the crocodile, or the, or the lizard. Roger Bacon uh, wrote down the uh, how to make gunpowder. First people to see gunpowder, that would be appear like magic. Uh, Romanus, we see the Ouroboros. We mentioned the phoenix, which is connected to Hermes in Kroll's work. The, again, I'll come back to that. The pelican feeding its young. Um, Paracelsus, very important alchemist, especially in regards to medicine, but the sun and the moon imagery. But here we have Raymond Lull. Now notice, well, he, just like we saw earlier, he's holding the, the three flowers. We have the uh, Star of David, so the famous images of Basil Valentine. It's almost identical. And identical, now it's maybe hard to make out here. Um, there we have... Uh, what we see there, and what we see in the background of this image, is what we see here, the uh, fox eating the cockerel, which relates to dragon's blood, and I'll put a link to some lab where he uses the language in the imagery and the known uh, symbols, chemical symbols of the alchemist, recreates it and makes fluoroidal gold. So there we see the cockerel uh, being eaten by the fox. So we see again these, uh, some attributed to Raymond Lull, others to... Uh, Basil Valentine. If we go on to Zoroaster, School of Athens, very important artwork with many famous people, Diogenes, Socrates, Hypatia, uh, Euclid, Pythagoras, but it includes Zoroaster. And the thing that Zoroaster is famous for, that Rose Cross, Rosy Crucians, that's the 18th degree Scottish Rite Freemasonry, you'll see the same symbol in churches. The breast, the pelican, feeding its young. But the pelican flask, double distillation. Again, credited to Zoroaster in um, Arab alchemists, and then again later Europe, European alchemy, distillation. Once more, this important alchemical process. There's an older one, and there's what it would look like in a modern lab. In Kroll's work, he shows Geba with the Arabs. Well, again, uh, Geba, the Arab Arabian alchemist, and there we see the pelican. Uh, connection again uh, but also Zoroaster, Zoro, Zoroastrian Astrianism, Eastern mystical schools, um, religions and duality, so Ahura Mazda the Lord of Wisdom is versus the Angra Mainu of a lying mind but the, the God, God and the devil have to be equal because they could not exist, this is sort of one of the dualistic themes, a bit deeper than that but this was also the Cafars, the heretics in Europe who were expunged in a crusade. They were dualists and shared a lot with Neoplatonists, so Gnostics, Neoplatonists, Hermeticists. This is Clavis Artis, uh, 1600s, the three flowers, Zoroaster on top of the crocodile. Zoroaster, Clavis Artis, and... This is from Clavis Artis, there we see a close-up for the wyvern eating the snake. Hermes, is a, oh, again, image, compass and square, the wyvern eating the snake. Uh, School of Athens, and I'll do this in the next um, one. But, uh, Plotinus, Aristotle, Plato, Diogenes, uh, Ptolemy, Euclid, Pythagoras, etc., etc. 
seven liberal arts, cheers.